Well, on the bright side, if the 10 run curse is back, I guess they really are back in last year's form. Hollow victories are a hell of a thing. Hi, I'm Weston. I love talking about the Astros, and I'm here to talk about game 48 of the regular season where the Astros lose 6 0 to the Milwaukee Brewers in just a cruddy, ugly game and snap their win streak. Now, the 6 0 makes it seem like a bigger blowout than it actually was. This was a pretty tight game until the eighth inning, but we'll get there in due time. The offense just never really did anything. They never really even threatened. The two noteworthy day, the two noteworthy uh, offensive outputs were Jordan Alvarez, who went 0 for 1 but reached base three times with a hit by pitch and a couple of walks, and Jeremy Pena had a couple of base hits. Jeremy Pena again, just quietly just starting to climb up that little ladder. He's, he's getting his offense going. It's good to see, and had a double in this game as well. You know, Jeremy Pena starting to look pretty good. Pretty darn good sophomore season so far, if I do say so myself, for uh, Pena. That OPS is over 700 for a shortstop. That's pretty good. He'll definitely take that, especially with the offense that, or the defense that hasn't gone up or down. He's good. The big storyline for the offense, as far as hitters and position players, was Altuve leaving the game. A lot of people panicked and thought, oh my god, we rushed him back from injury. And I'm, I, I never thought it was that. I thought it was something simple. And it ended up being, hopefully, that. He left with an illness. So, hopefully, I mean, hopefully he just had to poop really bad, and that was what it was. He's being evaluated. Dusty Baker didn't seem particularly concerned with it. So, hopefully, it's just a minor thing and felt sick to his stomach. You can see in his facial expression, it wasn't that he was frustrated or sad or anything. He just looked like he kind of needed to go poop or throw up and i'm sorry that i have to say that but that's what it looked like and that seemingly might be what it was which would be the best case scenario pitching we'll go to that and and desperately try to change the, change the topic jp france was fine he was good he was a emergency rookie pitcher having an okay game had a couple of hiccups the defense wasn't really there behind him he gave up quite a bit of hard contact but five and two-thirds innings Gave up five hits, a pair of runs, only one of them was earned. Only gave up one walk, struck out eight guys with 12 swings and misses. I've been incredibly pleased with J.P. France. He had a pretty darn good game tonight. I have no qualms. It'd be nice to see the innings maybe go a little bit deeper, but even that, it's just a total nitpick. If he gets through that sixth inning, that's not even a question. It's just a matter of that he couldn't get through it. He looks good. He looks genuinely good. I'm very impressed with J.P. France to this point of the season. Uh, Phil Maton had an inning and a third of work. And was perfect through it with three strikeouts. Phil Maton might be the best reliever the Astros currently have this season. And I was pounding the Phil Maton drum back in 2021 when he was first acquired, saying that it was a good move. Even though you did have to give up Miles Straw, that move looks really good right now. He's been fabulous out of the bullpen. And now we go to the opposite end of that spectrum with Rafael Montero. Now, two things can be true at once. You can look at a lot of the numbers and see that Rafael Montero is genuinely, he's not the luckiest of guys, right? His numbers don't suggest that he should be this bad. Now, that being said, even if he was pitching to what he should be doing according to all the numbers, he still wouldn't be particularly good. To this point, Rafael Montero, and it pains me to say this because I defended the contract at the time and through the first couple games of the season... You're at a point now where until he genuinely turns it around, I can't anymore. He has been an unmitigated disaster. ERA is at 731 right now. To the big the big keep in the bullpen this season. That was your big thing, was you re-signed Rafael Montero. Expecting to get last year Montero, and you very much have not gotten that. I saw a fascinating tweet by Michael Schwab on Twitter that was in the offseason without a GM. The Astros gave out $93 million in guaranteed money over the next three seasons to Abreu and Montero. And if that isn't just... That screams you need to have a GM and you can't just have a committee deciding these things. And I, I'm, I'm still very hopeful in Abreu that he can turn it around. He had another base hit tonight. That's very encouraging. Montero, on the other hand, the good thing is there's a lot of time left on it. Got two more years after this where he could easily rebound. That being said, if he continues to pitch the way he has this season and he actually finishes the year with an over 7 ERA, I don't know that he will actually have those last two years on that contract to rebound it. It's, it's that level of bad, guys. And 
I defended it at the time. I am willing to say I might have been comically wrong in doing so. To this point, it's been a bad contract. And not just bad, but maybe one of the worst contracts on the team. Which, again, is painful to say because Montero was fantastic for the Astros last season, throughout the postseason and the regular season. This year, it's been buzz your girlfriend woof ugly. So the Astros will once again try to win the series tomorrow afternoon, 1-10 Eastern, noon 10 Central. The Astros send Brandon Belak to the mound, and the Brewers will send Adrian Hauser to the mound. I'll be here afterwards to talk about it, but as for right now, that's all I have to say. So if you enjoyed the video, please consider to like and subscribe. Thank you all so very much for watching. I hope you all have an absolutely fantastic day, and as always, go Strohs.